Good morning students. Today we will discuss SCR, Silicon Controlled Rectifier, which comes under thyristor family. Thyristor denotes a family of semiconductor devices used for power control in DC and AC systems. The other members under thyristor family are GTO, Triac, Diac, etc. Among this, SCR is the most widely used and popular member of the thyristor family. Therefore, SCR, silicon controlled rectifier, referred to as the thyristor. In the schematic diagram and symbol of SCR is shown here. SCR or thyristor is basically a switch, a semiconductor switch with three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. Anode is the positive terminal, cathode is the negative terminal and this terminal, third terminal gate is known as the control terminal. So thyristor is a four layer, three junction, PN, PN, Semiconductor Switching Device. A thyristor consists of four layers of alternate P-type and N-type semiconductors forming three junctions, J1, J2 and J3. The terminal connected to the outer P-layer is known as anode and the terminal connected to the outer N layer is called cathode and that connected to the inner P layer is called gate. Gate terminal is usually kept near the cathode terminal. It is a semi-controlled switch. For the construction of SCR, silicon is used and its operation as a rectifier. Rectifier converts AC to DC. Its operation as a rectifier can be controlled. Hence the name silicon controlled rectifier. Like diode, SCR is an unidirectional device that allows the current to flow from anode to cathode. And it blocks the current flow from cathode to anode because anode is positive and cathode is negative. Current always flowing from anode to cathode. Next we will discuss the turn on methods of SCR. Turn on is also known as triggering or firing methods of SCR. The commonly used turn on methods are forward voltage triggering, gate triggering, dv by dt triggering, temperature triggering and light triggering. First we will discuss the forward voltage triggering. For this SCR is forward biased means anode is connected to positive terminal of the battery and cathode is connected to negative terminal of the battery with the gate circuit open. So in this connection, we can see that J1 and J3 are forward biased and J2 is reverse biased because N is connected to positive and P is connected to negative. As a result, depletion layer is formed across junction J2. The width of this layer decreases with the increase in anode cathode voltage. Also, increasing anode cathode voltage accelerates the minority carriers across the junction J2. As a result, avalanche breakdown of the junction J2 occurs at a particular anode cathode voltage known as forward breakover voltage represented as VBO forward breakover voltage, VBO. 
as the junctions J1, J3 are already forward biased, breakdown of the junction J2 allows the free movement of carriers across three junctions. And as a result, large forward anode current flows. Therefore, thyristor changes from off state to on state. So, this is the forward voltage triggering. Next one is gate triggering. This is the most common and efficient method to turn on the SCR. Now here also SCR is forward biased. Means anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative of the supply. And also here a positive gate voltage is applied between gate and cathode. So this causes a positive gate current IG to flow through this channel. When positive gate voltage is applied, gate P layer is flooded with the electrons from the cathode. This is because cathode N layer is heavily doped compared to P layer. Some of these electrons reaches the junction J2. As a result, width of the depletion layer near the junction J2 is reduced. This causes the junction J2 to break down at an applied voltage lower than VBO, that is forward breakover voltage. If the magnitude of gate current IG is increased, more electrons will reach the junction J2. As a result, SCR is turned on at a much lower forward applied voltage. So next one is DV by DT triggering. Here also SCR is forward biased with the anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative of the supply with the gate circuit is open. Here junction J1, J3 are forward biased and J2 is reverse biased. This reverse biased junction J2 has a characteristics of a capacitor due to the charges existing across the depletion layer. Means the junction J2 behaves like a capacitor. When a forward voltage is suddenly applied, the charging current through the junction capacitance C is IC is equal to dQ by dt. We know that Q is equal to CV. Therefore, d by dt of capacitance value C into applied voltage VA. Suppose this one is VA. The applied voltage VA. So, which is equal to C into dVA by dt plus VA into DC by DT. As the junction capacitance is almost constant, DC by DT is zero. So we can avoid this term. Therefore, IC is equal to C into DVA by DT, where VA is the applied voltage. Therefore, if the rate of rise of forward voltage dVA by dt is high, the charging current IC would be more. This charging current plays the role of gate current IG. This turns on the SCR even though gate signal is zero. This is known as dV by dt triggering. So next one is temperature triggering. This is somewhat similar to that of forward voltage triggering. Here also 
anode is connected to positive of the supply and cathode is connected to negative of the supply and the SCR is forward biased. And when the voltage is applied across the reverse biased junction J2, the leakage current flows through the junction J2. This increases the temperature of this junction. With increase in temperature, the width of the depletion layer decreases. This further leads to more leakage current and therefore more junction temperature. This is a cumulative process. At some high temperature, depletion layer becomes varnishes and the device gets turned on. So this is temperature triggering. This type of triggering is practically not employed. So next one is light triggering. An SCR is turned on by light radiation is called as light activated SCR that is LASCR light activated SCR. In this method a small opening is made in the inner P layer as shown. Light rays with the appropriate wavelength and intensity are allowed to strike the junction J2 through this opening. When the light strikes the hole, additional electron hole pairs are generated at the junction J2, which provides additional charge carriers at the junction and leads to turn on the SCR. Among all these turn on methods, gate triggering is the most efficient and commonly used method to turn on the SCR. Thank you.